Thank you for joining us on Finding God in the World of Video Games, a place where we celebrate our favorite games, characters, and gaming stories, while uncovering biblical insight and spiritual truth along the way. Today we're going to be taking a look at Super Mario Maker 2, coming soon on the Nintendo Switch. We're going to see this one in June of this year. Very excited to see how they're going to be integrating one of my favorite games within the Mario realm, Super Mario 3D World. We're going to see assets from that game and levels that are going to be based on that. So I'm very excited to see Mario transitioning from his plumber hat and overalls into his construction gear once again coming to the Switch this year. You know, I was thinking about this whole Mario as a plumber thing. I mean, seriously, when has Mario actually done anything plumberly? I remember playing the original Mario on the NES. No plumbing. I played Mario 2, 3, and Super Mario World. Still no plumbing. Mario 64, not a single bit of plumbing. Mario 3D World, Mario Odyssey. I mean, I'm pretty sure Mario hasn't plumbed anything at any point in time ever. You know, you're not wrong, but I'm going to keep it real with you for a second. I'm pretty glad that any of the Mario games don't involve any plumber action whatsoever. I don't want to play a game where I'm fixing leaky sinks. Certainly don't want to play a game where I'm fixing overflowing toilets. I think I'd rather stick to trying to stomp on egomaniacal giant turtles and all of their friends. But, you know, let me ask you something. You're talking about some of the classic games. Did you do any of those... Cool tricks with the 99 lives, the, the, the warp whistles and the secret warp pipes and any of that? I, I'm going to be honest with you, I had no idea that there were ever any cheats like that in Super Mario. thought it was a pretty simple game where you just hit the blocks and you keep running and make sure you don't die. Well, you know, I was that way too, but I'll tell you something. I'll never forget the first time when I was playing the original Mario Brothers and accidentally... I jumped and bumped my head on an invisible block, and when it appeared, an extra life mushroom fell out, and I was stunned. I thought maybe I'd broke the game. But the more I was exploring, the more I found a lot of these little hidden blocks, these secrets, that might have a, a world of coins or power-ups, a pipe that you didn't know you could go down, and each level had these little secret clues that were designed to reward your curiosity. You know, at first I thought I was the only person on the whole planet aware of these little hidden bonuses and secrets in the game. And then one day when I was out shopping with my parents, I saw this little book in a video game store, How to Win at Nintendo Games. I can still remember the little red cover on it, and I was stunned that such a thing existed. That not only did the little bit of secrets I had found, but more, so much more, was available not just on Mario Brothers, but pretty much every game I owned or ever dreamed of owning. Of course, I begged my parents for the book, and after probably about five or six different shopping trips, they realized I was not going to stop and decided to go ahead and pick it up for me. So how come you just didn't, you know, go online and, and search it on YouTube or Google or something? Well, I know this might surprise you, but Google and YouTube haven't exactly been around since the dawn of time. I know that's a surprise to a lot of people, <laughs> but... Back in my day, strategy guides and these online videos and walkthroughs that we can use now to get through tricky parts of games, that didn't exist. And instead, we were dependent on fellow gamers finding these things out through trial and error and writing these down in, in little books and handing each other scraps of paper in the hall as we walked from class to class. It was tribal knowledge that we were sharing when we found these secrets out and we'd share them in places that don't exist today, like video game arcades. We, now we live in a day and age where it's possible to have every gaming question answered by a fellow gamer instantly. And I will say that while I'll always look back on those old days of scribbling down the Contra code in one of my little notebooks to brain home and try out with fond nostalgia, it's kind of convenient to be able to just flip on the computer and be able to figure out where I need to shoot my second portal without having to do all the hard work myself. You know, what you're talking about really does actually remind me of the Bible. Because if you think about it, the Bible is really God's ultimate strategy guide for life. Absolutely everything you will face in your life has been lived by somebody else. And these experiences have been documented for our benefit and placed in a volume that we can really reference at any time in our lives. You're, you're, honestly, you're completely right. All the secret pathways have already been explored. The bonus point areas in life have been notated for easy return visits. And the traps that threaten to take us down have been marked 
to help us avoid the pitfalls of our predecessors. Even with all of our current advances in technology and the supposed cultural advances that we enjoy as a modern civilization, the Bible still has all the answers for every problem we will ever face, if you know where to look. And today I want to look at, in this walkthrough for the game of life, a story about a man of God, a miracle, and a prison guard who had a pretty serious victim mentality. In Acts 16.23, we find the Apostle Paul and his co-worker Silas falsely accused of creating insurrection, beaten with a whip for crimes that they did not commit, and thrown into prison. These innocent preachers were locked into stocks in the deepest part of the prison, far past the cells for murderers and thieves under the strictest of night watches. It kind of seems like a little overkill, if you ask me. But with all of the precautions that had been made to keep them imprisoned, it still was not enough. Now, Paul and Silas did not choose to get on their Twitter accounts and inform their followers of how terrible their day has been and, and how unfair life can be. Instead, they chose to sing. They chose to praise their creator and understood that he had not abandoned them, no matter how bad things looked right then. And as they sang, the Bible records an incredible event. You know, I just have to say what Paul and Silas did there was really inspirational for me and I think should be inspirational for a lot of other people as well because they were going through something that, like you said, wasn't even their fault and they were still praising and singing to the Lord and still had faith in him, which is something that I think that we can all learn from and I think that we should all do as well. And because of the positive response that Paul and Silas demonstrated here, the Bible records an incredible event in response to their singing, the first ever recorded missionary prison break. At midnight, an earthquake so massive that it shook the entire prison structure hit. It broke open all of the locked cell doors, freed every prisoner in the facility. I want you to picture this for a minute, a maximum security prison full of all the people that society has deemed unfit for freedom, and its walls suddenly crack open. Security panels are being overridden. You can hear the alarm klaxons blaring over the loudspeakers, flashing red lights filling the hallways with smoke and rubble and the chaos after this massive quake. And in the midst of all of this stands one man, the prison warden. He only has one job, to keep the good people safe by keeping the bad people in. And despite all of their security protocols, all of the carefully programmed electronic locks, all of their security manuals that they have designed to prevent this possibility, forces beyond his ability to control or to understand have just rendered all of those mechanisms moot. And here is where this becomes very relevant for us today. And this is where I see the sad pattern that I personally witnessed so many people fall into. With everything going wrong around him, the prison guard fails to see that despite all of the confusion and the destruction that he is surrounded by, there's actually nothing to fear. Unaware that none of the prisoners have taken advantage of their newly found freedom, the jailer chooses to end his life, pulling out a sword to end his existence. Have you ever known anyone who's faced this or perhaps been tempted by this yourself? Have you or someone you know felt the desire to inflict pain on your body as a means of dealing with a world around you that seems completely hostile. This really isn't a new temptation to be honest with you. And this existed thousands of years ago. And the Bible records this for us so that we can avoid this kind of danger, as well as save others from enduring this pain. I personally have talked to many friends and people who felt that unfortunately, slitting their wrists was the only answer to this insane world that we live in. And I have a feeling that everyone knows few of these people as well. So what happens next? Well, our prison guard has given up, failing to see the reality of his situation because of his limited view and assumption that there's no hope. And he's about to make the fatal cut when out of all of this madness rings the voice of the Apostle Paul screaming, don't harm yourself. We are all still here. Such a simple line, but if you or someone you know has ever faced the darkness and felt they could not go on, I'm telling you, and I hope you tell them right now, don't harm yourself. No matter how bad you may think it is, there is more than just hope. There is purpose. Mm -hmm. 
behind all of the wreckage and the rubble that you see right now in the aftermath of whatever traumatic earthquake you've just experienced in your life, the plan for your life is still here. God's will for you is still intact. As a matter of fact, the earthquake was part of his plan. You are a perfectly designed vessel. You're meant to carry his very spirit with you through each and every day of your life. And he has plans to prosper you and take care of you. It may look bad right now, and you may not be able to see a way out of your situation. But I promise you, just as the jailer is about to find out, this was all a plan to benefit you. We just need to realize that the extra life mushroom may be invisible to us right now, but it is there nonetheless. As our prison guard races to the sound of Paul's voice and having found all the prisoners still in place, just as he had been told, he and his whole family give their lives to God. The entire episode has a happy ending all the way around. The earthquake had a purpose, not just for the warden, but for his entire family. The warden cares for the unfair and painful wounds that have been inflicted on Paul and Silas. His entire family was brought together by this incredible circumstance, and the next day, Paul and Silas are both released to continue their missionary voyage. These lives were changed forever, and every one of them had a deeper understanding of how truly in control of our lives and circumstances our God is. It may not always look that way from the outside. But this entire story was recorded for our benefit, so we can know that it does not matter how dark and scary our circumstances appear right now, the solution may and typically does present itself in the midnight hour. So if you ever have a doubt about whether God sees you and the particular challenges that you're facing, rest assured that he does and he has a plan. Remember that God did not show up and prevent the rest of Paul and Silas. He didn't protect them from this brutal beating that they endured that they had not earned because there was a deeper and more important plan at work here. There was a prison warden who was living on that razor's edge and he and his entire family had a date with destiny. And in your life, every moment of pain and every scary situation you face serves a purpose. Someone else out there, someone who you may not even have met yet, is depending on you and your success and the trial that you are facing right now. And only by facing this and trusting God for the answer will we be able to take that next step that not only benefits us and God's plan for our lives, but it may save someone else's life too. We hope that finding this one-up mushroom in Acts was helpful, and we encourage you to share this secret code with friends, family, or anyone you know that may be going through a rough time. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Finding God in Video Games. And if you have any questions, comments, or have any prayer requests, please feel free to email us at findinggodinvideogames at gmail.com.